In this video, I'm talking about bone conduction headphones and why you might want to consider getting a pair. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, consider hitting the subscribe button. If you've been into Best Buy lately, there is no doubt that you've seen the endless supply of headphones that they have there, and it's limited really only by the amount of shelf space that they have to display them. You can pretty much buy any major brand of headphones from Bose, Beats by Dre, uh, Skull Candy, you name it, they have it there, and they have wired, wireless versions, you name it, uh, have all those as well. But enter one new style to the mix, and that is bone conduction headphones. Bone conduction headphones work differently than traditional headphones, and let me explain how. When you look at our hearing system, you can break it down into three different segments. The outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. What happens with traditional headphones is that sound gets sent all the way from the outer part of the ear through the ear canal to the eardrum, vibrates those ossicles or those bones of hearing, and then stimulates the hair cells inside of your cochlea. Now, in order for traditional headphones to work correctly, you need to have all of those systems working well so that sound can cleanly make it into your cochlea so you can hear. The way that bone conduction headphones work is that you actually stimulate the skull, creating a vibration which moves those hair cells directly inside of the cochlea. That's how you can bypass all of these outer and middle, hair, uh, middle ear components in order to stimulate hearing uh, via you know, those bone conduction headphones that will give you perception of music and people talking to you uh, over the phone and things like that. Well, that's great that you can stimulate the cochlea directly, but if you can stimulate the cochlea by going through the whole ear system by using traditional headphones, why would you even consider bone conduction headphones? Well, I can think of four reasons. Reason number one is if you have a conductive hearing loss. A conductive hearing loss is basically when the outer ear and the middle ear have something wrong with them to where it doesn't allow that transmission of sound all the way into your inner ear or your cochlea. When that happens, you can't use traditional headphones in order to get all of that sound to go all the way through for you to hear it well. That's why bone conduction headphones work so well. It completely bypasses the outer ear and the middle ear so you can stimulate that healthy cochlea in and of itself. Now that being said, you have to have a healthy cochlea that is hearing well, otherwise stimulating it with bone conduction will do no additional benefit beyond what traditional headphones would. Now some causes of this conductive hearing loss could be related to either earwax or a hole in your eardrum or those bones of hearing, the ossicles becoming dislodged or middle ear infection, fluid behind the ear, things like that. All of those things can give you a conductive hearing loss and when you have a cochlea that is still intact and functioning well, bone conduction hearing devices work really well. Reason number two is that you may not like something in or covering your ears. The cool thing about bone conduction devices is that they don't need to have anything that goes inside of your ear canals in order for them to work because you're not actually using your ear canal or your middle ear. You're stimulating that bone directly which can stimulate that cochlea and cause those hair cells to send that signal to your brain. So if you're the type of person who doesn't like having things put in your ear or you have sensitive ears, you have issues with earwax always plugging up your earphones, you don't really need to worry about that because the bone conduction devices tend to wrap around your ears and leave your ear canal open and exposed. Also on top of that is if you want to keep some kind of sound awareness by not plugging up your ears, bone conduction devices are a good option. However, if you're listening to those bone conduction devices really loud, it doesn't matter if your ear canals are plugged or unplugged, you're still not going to hear someone talking to you. Reason number three is that you actually have less chance of damaging your hearing using a pair of bone conduction headphones. And that's not to say that you couldn't cause hearing damage if you listen to it at a high enough volume for a long enough period of time, but you're much less likely to be causing damage to your ear compared to a pair of over-the-ear earphones or in-the-ear earphones. And that's because of a few factors. One of them being is that when you listen uh, via air conduction with those headphones, 
your ear canal will actually funnel sound in and cause it to somewhat amplify on its own. It's just a traditional characteristic that we all have with our ear canals. But on top of that, you, when you increase the volume too high in a bone conduction device, you lose a lot of that vibration because it's not all being forced in and directed in through the skull. Reason number four is if you just like cool new technology. Bone conduction headphones are not mainstream yet. They're not something that you go to the gym and see a bunch of people wearing. Uh, in fact, when I do wear them to the gym, I usually get a person or two coming up to me asking me what type of headphones they are, and then I explain the whole concept of bone conduction, and they seem to think that's pretty cool. So if that is something that interests you, then maybe it makes sense. In terms of a performance standpoint, I find them to be on par with other types of earbuds that you can wear in terms of sound quality and things like that. Definitely not up to the standard of my custom Bragi headphones or a pair of Bose over-the-ear earphones, but they're still good nonetheless. And then their Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth for me is a huge consideration for technology that I use. I like it to be wireless so I can use it with my phone and other type of Bluetooth devices. Um, and these headphones typically have all of those kinds of features. Now, as with any kind of consumer electronic, these particular type of headphones do have some drawbacks in my opinion. And the first one is, is that they can be a little bit uncomfortable. The whole concept of using bone conduction is that you can get those transducers to press hard enough into your skull in order to create a vibration that your ear can pick up and hear. Um, while I say that they create you know a, a pressure against your skull it's not an incredible amount of pressure i mean you can feel it when you're just sitting there and relaxing i found that when i'm at the gym i tend not to notice that pressure that is being pushed onto my cheekbones when i'm listening to these bone conduction devices but you know they that band that creates that pressure does wrap around the back of your neck and pushes down in the back of your ear and so depending on your own particular type of anatomy it might serve you well or it might be uncomfortable. And drawback number two is that they just won't function as well as a over-the-ear headphone in terms of sound quality unless you have a conductive hearing loss. And Conductive hearing losses are few and far between, and maybe the reason you're watching this video is because you, in fact, have a conductive hearing loss. If that's the case, then that is, this is not a drawback. But if you have normal hearing, maybe going with a bone conduction device doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you like that full, rich sound that you would get from wearing an over-the-ear headphone. When it's all said and done, bone conduction headphones make a whole lot of sense, especially if you have a conductive hearing loss. And with the increasing number of options that you have at Best Buy, Amazon, and other online retailers, you should be able to find the perfect pair for you. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.